Our topic this session is mental activity and sleep. And again, welcome Dr. Gurley. Thank you, Dr. Brayman. So in previous sessions, we talked about how sleep affects physical and mental health. But how about we flip the question around and ask, what do we know about how mental activity affects sleep? That's a very good question. If we think about mental activity as planning, problem solving, worrying, rehashing, or anticipating events related to your life, there is strong evidence that bringing these daytime concerns into your sleep time blocks high quality sleep. So how does thinking block something as important as sleep? It's not fully understood, but what studies do show is that thinking keeps the body in a state of alertness or awakeness. And that's the opposite of what the body needs to fall asleep and stay asleep. Okay, that makes sense. So how can someone work with his or her mental activity to improve sleep? It sort of depends on how often a person has trouble calming their thoughts and how strong their anxiety is about having trouble sleeping. So if a person has struggled for many months or years with poor sleep because he or she has difficulty switching out of thinking mode, then those people usually need to rebuild most, if not all, of their habits related to preparing for and going to sleep, getting to sleep, and getting up in the morning. So that sounds rather complicated. How does a person actually do that? It's not as complicated or difficult as it sounds. There's a well-developed treatment approach called Cognitive Behavioral Therapy, or CBT, that is a systematic process to help a person reset habits. And CBT has been shown to be quite effective for people who have high anxiety about how hard it is to get to sleep and stay asleep through the night. Okay, so CBT can help us manage the things around enabling good sleep. One of the most common issues that I run into working with patients is what I call the can't shut it off condition, where people are just in this thinking state that you were just referring to. They're worrying, they're kind of uptight. We all have life events, whether it's difficulties with work or family or the loss of a loved one or a car accident, that make it hard to shift out of thinking mode and getting good sleep. Yes, life challenges can really make it hard to get good sleep when you need it the most. One sleep health habit everyone should develop that can be particularly helpful in times of stress is to develop a routine or ritual where you intentionally bring your day to a close and you invite sleep. So how do you invite sleep? Basically, before you go to bed, you spend a few minutes reviewing your day and finding events from the day that you're thankful for or were successful and consciously setting aside the problems and difficulties that are ahead of you tomorrow or in the future. Also, you welcome the benefits of sleep that will help you resolve and overcome those challenges. So what I'm hearing in what you just said is gratitude, being thankful, and a positive focus, turning your mind towards positive things. What about if you just can't get to sleep, or you wake up in the middle of the night and find that thoughts and worries are keeping you awake? There is a technique called mindfulness meditation that can be very helpful. Mindfulness meditation is an easy-to-learn technique that helps you focus your mind on sensations in your body, like focusing on your breathing is the most common. This technique can also help you find and release tension spots in your body that often go along with sleep blocking, worry, and stress. This sounds extremely useful. I know um, this has been very useful for me in terms of using these techniques and learning to turn it off and to facilitate our body and mind being a condition ready for really effective sleep. Thank you so much, Dr. Gurley. Thank you, Dr. Brayman.